Hey everyone, welcome to another quick Avid tutorial. And the topic today is about doing transcodes in DaVinci Resolve to bring into Avid for your edit. And I've already done a full tutorial on this. I'll put the link below and a card here. So you can go to that for all the details, but there was one thing I didn't mention in there that can screw you up if you don't do it right. Everything in the workflow there is correct, but there was one setting that I didn't mention and I wanna make sure you know about it and why that could be an issue if you don't do it right. So the potential issue here has to do with the metadata that DaVinci Resolve puts in the transcoded files. So if I go to my media here, you'll see there's this column for real name. This is a piece of data that does get embedded in the transcodes and sent over to Avid. Avid doesn't need it itself. It works fine without it. But when you're trying to relink in Resolve, if you're coming back out of Avid after you've done your creative edit and doing your color grade back in Resolve, then this does become important and potentially can screw you up if it's missing. It might create problems relinking to the right media. So there's an easy solution for this, but the key thing is you have to do it before you do your transcodes. So I'm gonna go under File, Project Settings, and there's a nice little checkbox here. You might come up in this view by default. I'm gonna go into General Options and check this box that says assist using real names from the, I'm gonna click source clip file name. And what I'm telling it to do is just whatever the source clip name is, put that in the real name. And you can see as soon as I do that, it automatically populates this column here. And you can see it's the same thing as the original file names, except for the extension. This is Blackmagic raw footage, it doesn't have that. But this data then will get transferred over to Avid and stay with the clip as you do your creative edit. And then when you come back into Resolve, it will have this information and that can prevent some problems in potential relinking back in Resolve. So let's do a quick demo with this. I'm not gonna walk through all the steps in detail because I have that other video that does this very thoroughly, but I just wanna show you what happens and where the potential pitfalls are. So I'm gonna make a quick timeline of this clip and go to export it. And I'm just gonna use my usual transcoding settings. Again, this is covered in more detail in the other tutorial, so feel free to look at that one. If any of this is not clear. Okay, and I'll do a quick render. Okay, that's done. And for comparison, I'm gonna do another clip that I'm gonna transcode with that setting turned off, just so you can see where the potential headaches are. So I'll turn this off, which again, should be on. You'll see now that real name column is empty. And I'm just gonna pick another short clip and do the same thing and transcode that. So I'm gonna skip over all this till this is done so you can see what happens in Avid. So I'll go ahead and do that and meet back up with you in a second. Okay, so those are done. Here's all the clips I just transcoded. I'm gonna put them in a folder. I'll just use today's date. And then of course we know for Avid, we'll have to put it in an Avid Media Files folder. And a folder in there called MXF. Okay, so now I'm gonna pop over to Avid. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in these clips using the media tool, which again, details are covered in the longer tutorial. If you need a refresher. Okay, so here's my two clips. You can see they both came in both of them load up and will play okay. But what I want to show you is we have one thing different here, which is this tape column. So that real name column in Resolve right here is what populates this. And you remember this I turned off. Let's go ahead and turn that setting back on. General options. So we see this here. Now here's the thing. Avid will work fine with these clips. I can do all my creative edit. Everything's fine. If there is gonna be a problem, I'm not gonna find out about it until I try to go back to Resolve and start doing my color grading there. And so this is one of those things that you can screw up if you don't have that setting right and not notice until way later in the process when it is much, much harder to fix. There is always a fix. You can always find a way to reconform your sequence and make it work correctly. It just can be a bit more work. So if you have that setting correct, that will avoid some potential headaches. Now, one thing you might think is, okay, well, I know I can always copy data into different columns. So for instance, I could like copy this and put it over here in tape ID. I'm like, great, I forgot to do this in Resolve. Can I just do that here? Unfortunately, this is one of those columns in Avid. I'm hitting Command V, if you can hear the noise there. 
that it does not let you manually edit like that. There is a way to change it. I'll show you. I can right click, go into modify, modify clip, go to set source. I need to create a new tape name. Now I'll paste it in. Okay. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And it finally let me do it. So there is a way to change that if you want to get that data in there. As you can see, it's just a whole bunch of clicks and a bit of a pain. And imagine if you had like 100 or 1,000 different clips that you had to do this with, and you have to do each one manually to make this work correctly, going through that modify process and adding a new name, and it's going to give you all those things to, are you sure you want to do this? It just can be a problem. You might be wondering what is the potential problem here or what could go wrong. And in a lot of cases, even if I didn't have that tape name, I go back into Resolve and things could link up fine. The potential issue is at that point, Resolve doesn't have one of the markers it's using to make sure it associates the right files with the right parts of your sequence. And so it's relying on other things instead. So if you had two clips that had the same time code range and you didn't have this tape info to distinguish which was which, that could be a problem and Resolve might end up linking a clip with the wrong clip, but that has a matching section of time code in it because it doesn't have this additional marker. Like I said, a lot of times things will work out fine. Sometimes they won't. And so this is just one of those things that if you want to minimize potential headaches, make sure that you are setting that project setting before you do your transcodes and making sure to turn this on. And that'll populate that tape column in Avid. And that will just make sure that when you're ready to bring your sequence back into Resolve for coloring from Avid, you export your AAF, you bring it into Resolve, and it knows for sure which clip matches up with which, and you don't get any weird errors or clips not being found. Or, like I said, finding other clips that have the same time code and assuming those are the ones that match up and using those. If that does happen, it's not the end of the world. There are plenty of ways to go through and Resolve and relink things back to the correct clips that you want them to link to, but it's just one more headache that you'd rather avoid if you can. So, hope that was helpful. If you want the full tutorial on transcoding in Resolve, bring those into Avid, and then bringing an edited sequence out of Avid back into Resolve for doing coloring, you can follow this video link here. That's it for me today. Happy editing, and see you next time.